and I thought I was almost home free, and I went to check my rollers, rockers, whatever you want to call them, and what do you see right there? So one of them got pushed off the valve stem. I was 100% sure I'd check, but I guess I was wrong. I guess you do everything twice when you're learning, so I'm just gonna do that again. So it's another day. I finally got my hydros back in the mail. I ordered two more because these two on Piston 6 were not doing so good. They're a bit loose and squishy compared to the others. They shouldn't do that. It's a one-way check valve where oil goes through it. So, so yeah, we got those two. So now I'm going to put together the rest of the exhaust. Valve stem seals, valves, springs, retainers, all that stuff. So just like with the intakes, my first order of business is I'm gonna clean down these, these valve guides. Make sure they're super clean. You do not want any grit or any dirt in there because it will scratch up the, the valve itself. So what I'm using is just some brake clean and one of these little soft bristle brushes to get down in there, clean it, brake clean it, and then blow some air down there. So then when we put some oil on the on the shaft, this is nicely lubed up and there's no grit or anything um, down in there. So I'm going to do that now on all these. Okay, so now that that's all cleaned up, what we're going to do is we're going to go through the process again of uh, putting the valves back in there. Um, first order of business is I'm going to take the valve, I'm just going to clean it off with some brake clean, wipe it down, make sure there's no grit or dirt on it. I should get on my rubber gloves for this and then I'm going to put a bit of oil on the on the valve guide or on the valve stem and I'm going to put the valve in into its right spot so it has some oil. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to squirt some oil up into the valve guides, put a bit of oil on the valve itself and then put this together. And We'll do all the valves then we'll flip this down and put the valve stem seals on. So let's get to it. Take a bit of oil, put it on the valve stem and push it into the guide gently. Next, again, just brake clean this. Make sure it's nice and clean. Put a little bit of oil on there. And in we go. Gently push on the valve stem seals here. So if you guys remember how the if you guys remember how the valve stem seal go on, what you need to do is use this little um, plastic I don't know guide thing. What we need to do is just hold the valve, push that on, and then we're gonna soak this in some clean oil, just like that. Get it nice and oiled up. Of course, make sure the seats are all clean. I've already brake cleaned all the seats. And then we're just gonna hold the valve in. Push that on over top. Push it down until it seats. And then we can take that off.
now that those are on, we're going to um, put the valve stem seal, sorry. Now that those are all on, we're going to put the valve springs back in. I have my valve spring tool here. I'm going to flip this up. So again, just like with the valve stem seals, what I'm going to do, I am going to just clean this off. There's a little bit of gunk on there. Make sure these are nice and clean. Right clean them. We're going to put them on, tighten them down, and then put the spring retainer clips back in. So I have my brake clean here. Clean these off. Put them back on. What I like to do is first hold down this end um, to the valve spring and then tighten it so it cinches up around the back. Just makes life a bit easier because then I can aim it to be in the center of the valve rather than the other way around. And that's on there. I'm gonna tighten it down. Then I have my trusty uh, magnetic extendable magnet. What I like to do is, um, so remember when you're putting on the valve keeper, the valve keeper should be tapered um, inward towards the valve itself. So the thicker portion is at the top of the valve and the thinner portion is at the bottom. So what I like to do is position this in a way so that I can clip it in sideways, kind of like that. So I'm gonna go in onto the valve like that. And what I like to do is just add a little bit of oil so it sticks. I'll show you. So we get it on there and then we use our finger and then pull it off. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rotate this with my finger Make sure it stays on there and then do that with the second valve again i have it sideways put a bit of oil on it rinse and repeat and that time it grabbed the other side so i'm just going to go on the other side maybe even i can use my hands for this one this one's not that bad It's on there. And then we're gonna center the hole. That looks good. That looks like it's on there. <clears throat> and then what you can do is just for good measure is just tap it with a with a hammer. Alright. Now, I guess let's just keep this going. So I've got all the valves back in. Um, with the springs and the retainers, everything went to plan. One had fallen off and I had to go, you know, flip this over and let it fall out and then grab it again. Um, I have my two new hydros. What do you call these exactly? Valve, whatever. Pretty much they go between the valve, they're the hydraulic rocker. Anyway, I got two new ones for cylinder six because they were really squishy. I know you probably cannot see that, but it's moving quite a bit. This isn't supposed to move that much. It's supposed to be kind of hard as a rock. All the other ones are hard as a rock, so 
Um, what we're going to do, <coughs> I've already cleaned all the holes <coughs> with some brake clean. Uh, what I'm going to do is clean these up, clean up the roller. What I've been doing is, just like with the intake side, I'm putting a bit of oil, sorry, I'm putting a bit of brake clean through this. Then a bit of air. Like that. And then we're squirting some more oil in there. Yep. And then again, lubing them all up, lubing up the holes, and putting these back in. So that's the process that uh, I'm doing. And of course, cleaning these off with some brake clean. And I'll probably put some assembly lube on here just so that, um, just for reassembly. All right, so I brake clean, clean this off. No dirt on it. Looks good to go. Just gonna put some oil in the bore here. Yeah, put some oil on this. And also put some oil on the top bit part, on the top part here. And then we're going to place this in. This is the new one. Nice rock hard. And we'll take this cap off. You may need just some pliers pull on the end of it gently. Just like that. I'm just going to clean it off. Make sure the bore is oiled. Make sure this is oiled. I'm going to pop that down in there. I have the, the roller here as well. I'm just going to clean that off. Put a little bit of oil on the top. Right here. I'm going to push that on. Just like that. And later I'm going to roll lube the oil and later I'm going to lube uh, the roller the rollers here with oil before I put the exhaust camshaft back on. So now let's do the rest of these. So I just wanted to jump in here to explain more about what I'm doing. Um, I was lubricating the holes where the lifters live and then putting the rollers on top of them, making sure that they fit. Uh, then I went and cleaned the cam bearing ledge. Uh, it, it collects a lot of gunk and grease on the lower side where some of the oil sits. So brake clean that out. I even used a scotch Brite pad to clean it all off and make sure that it, it's looking brand new. Uh, make sure that the surfaces where the camshaft lives also are super clean. Then put the bearing ledge on the head itself and center all of the rollers on the valve to make sure that they're centered on there. As you'll see, I messed that up and one of them was actually off. Uh, don't forget to replace the updated camshaft seal on the end of it. It's a Teflon piece instead of the metal rings. Uh, and then I lubed up all of the camshaft bearings where the camshaft sits with some assembly lube. Um, and then I put in the, ex uh, the exhaust camshaft. So I rolled it a little bit to make sure that it, was, uh, it wasn't binding on anything. And then I rotated it so that the QR code was facing upward. Um, and then I put uh, assembly lube again on the cam so that when it gets started up for the first time, there isn't any metal, metal on metal uh, action. So once you put the cam bearing ledge on, you'll notice that it doesn't fit flush with the cam, sorry, with the cylinder head because uh, two of the valves are actually supposed to be open and right now those are pushing back on the camshaft. So what you'll have to do is put in all of the bolts and then uh, tighten them down by hand and then we'll gradually be tightening them down one by one, you know, a turn or two at a time until the whole camshaft pushes down on those two valves. Okay, so I'm trying here to 
uh, put this on, I've already lubed up the the bearings. This is uh, you have to put these in dry. These screws, but I don't have the tool that holds this together, and I don't have the tool that presses down on the, on, on cylinder two because right now it's pushing it up because the cylinder is a bit open. So. From what I see online, people just screw this in gently. Um, you start from the inside and go to the outside. And uh, yeah, you just gently screw it in. This is almost at TDC. Actually, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to blow out all of the holes with some air. So I'm gonna do that now. So I just gently tighten down everything little by little by little by little, all of them starting in the middle and going out to the edges and then again in the middle and going out to the edges. And I thought I was almost home free and I went to check all my roller bearings, my rollers, rockers, whatever you want to call them. And what do you see right there? So one of them got pushed off the valve stem and I can't lift it to put it back on. So it's loose there but I just can't, can't get it. Um, I was gonna try to push down the valve, but I guess I have to undo everything and do it all over again. So double check that your roller bearings, sorry, your rockers are all lined up. I was 100% sure I'd check, but I guess I was wrong. Double check everything again, and I guess you do everything twice when you're learning. So I'm just gonna do that again. More moments later. So now that all that's tightened down, I mean, it looks good. Um, I've snuck the bolts up. You should put them to um, eight foot pounds, sorry, eight Newton meters. All of this is in Newton meters. And then now we're going to torque this all up 60 degrees. So get out your torque angle gauge and set it up. Problem is, there's not really that much stuff that's steel so if I want to do 60 degrees then I'm going to put it at 240 and go to 300 so let's torque it down I'm gonna do right now is just prop this up on its side or maybe I can do it right here and just rotate it to see you put a this is a 27 mil it feels like this is a 26 millimeter um, kind of end just rotate it to see if it rotates
Yeah. Well, everything's actuating, so it's not binding, which is great. So now I'm going to just find, oh, I found it. It's top dead center. You want to put the camshaft so that QR code is facing the top. And that means it should be at top dead center for when we put our um, timing gears back on there. So next order of business is we need to put um, the head back on, I think. I think that's it. This is this should be ready to go. And uh, to put the head back on, timing chain, all that stuff. So what I'm going to do in order to keep the engine timed properly is you actually need the flywheel installed. Um, and you, you install the flywheel and you put the pin, this pin that's down here in it to make sure it's at TDC. You can see that little plastic pin there. Um, but I can't fit the flywheel in here. So maybe I just eyeball it or maybe I just have to take this off the stand, put it in TDC. I don't think the flywheel will not fit in here. Um, there's not enough room because of these bolts. I don't think I can push this out any further. Um, so maybe I'll have to eyeball it to put it to TDC or time it when it's on the ground. Um, so anyway, I have to figure that out right now. So I just want to give a massive thank you to everyone that's been watching the videos, uh, commenting below, sharing their knowledge of these engines. You know, it's been super, super helpful. Um, so in the next video, we're going to be uh, finishing up the bottom end. I forgot we need to do the rod bolts and then we need to finish the oil pan gasket and a few other things before we can actually put the head back on. Uh, so if you're interested in that, consider subscribing. We have a ton more videos uh, to finish up to get this engine back in the car. So you don't want to miss that. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the